Hi, my name is Abhishek Pandey and I am a product manager at AWS. In the previous videos of this series, we learned how we can use Amazon Verified Permissions to secure API Gateway APIs based on user groups and attributes. Today, we will learn how you can use caching, more specifically decision caching, to reduce latency and cost. I highly encourage you to take a look at previous videos in the series before digging deep through this video. You can refer to the QR code provided on the screen to get started listening to other videos in the series. So before we begin and deep dive into caching, let's take a complete look at the architecture of the application and how we have used Quick Start to protect its APIs. Well, in any application, the first step is to authenticate the user. This can be done using either Amazon Cognito or an OIDC identity provider. Once the user authenticates, they get a set of JWT tokens. They could be either ID tokens or access tokens. The application then presents these JWT tokens to Amazon API Gateway to authorize the request. Amazon API Gateway authorizes the request by calling a Lambda authorizer that then calls Amazon Verified Permissions to get an authorization decision. When the authorization decision is a allow, the backend APIs are called. If the authorizer returns a deny decision, Amazon API Gateway returns back to the application with an unauthorized response. So now let's see how we can use caching or more specifically decision caching to reduce the latency and cost. To understand how that works, we need to zoom into Amazon API Gateway and take a look underneath. So this is what I've done on this slide. I've expanded into the Amazon API Gateway. The application still presents the JWT tokens uh, to Amazon API Gateway. Now internally, we see that Amazon API Gateway refers to a cache to load the decision. In this case, the cache is empty, and so it does not find a cached authorization decision. As a next step, it reaches out to Lambda Authorizer, which calls Amazon Verified Permissions to get an authorization decision. This authorization decision is sent back to API Gateway where it is cached. So what exactly is cached? Well, what we cache is the token for the user, the HTTP path, as well as the HTTP method. In this example, what we have cached is Alice's token, the HTTP path, which is slash order slash one, and the HTTP method get. What we have cached this against is the authorization decision, which was an allow. So now that we understand this at a high level, let's see what happens when Alice calls this API again. Similar to before, Alice presents a set of ID tokens or access tokens when calling the, calling the API to Amazon API Gateway. As a first step, Amazon API Gateway checks whether the decision is cached. It finds that the token, the HTTP path, and the HTTP method have a cached entry, which is an allowed decision. Now, because it has found a cached decision, API Gateway directly calls the backend application. What is worth noting is that Amazon Verified Permissions and the Lambda Authorizer are not triggered during this process. As a result, you save latency and cost because these services are not triggered. So rather than explain this as an architectural level, I thought 
why not demo this? So I set up a quick demo as part of this video. I will demo this using a sample application that I have set up in API Gateway. This sample application uses Amazon Verify permissions using the quick start method to protect its APIs. The application is a pet store and has two users, Alice and Abhi. Alice is a reader and is only allowed to call get APIs. Abhi, on the other hand, is an admin and is allowed to call all APIs. During the demo, I will showcase three use cases. I will, we will see what happens when the same user calls the same API multiple times. In the second demo, we will see what happens when the same user calls a different API. Lastly, we will see what happens when different users call the same API. So let's go ahead and check when a cache decision is used and when it is. In order to run this demo, I will use Postman to make an API request and X-ray traces to identify what services were called in processing the request. So let's head over to Postman. So what I have here set up in Postman is an API call to get pets more specifically pet one so we have http method get and the http path slash pets slash one i have also taken the token for alice and sent it as a bearer token so let's see what happens when i call this api so great we get the data back for pet one as alice is authorized to call this api now, in other order to see whether a cache decision is used, I'm going to call this API a few more times. Second time, third time, fourth time, and the fifth time. So now let's over, head over to X-Ray to understand what's going on behind the scenes. So here I am in X-Ray. I've checked all the traces for this specific API slash pets slash one. I'm going to run a query to get those. As you can see, I've received six traces uh, because we made six API calls. What you see is the lowest one has the oldest timestamp and took around 500 milliseconds versus the newer requests took between 5 to 15 milliseconds. This is because the first API call was not cached by Amazon API Gateway and it called a Lambda authorizer and verified permissions to get a response. This is compared to the other five API calls where a cache results was used and API Gateway was directly able to call verified permissions. So now let's see what specifically happened when we dig deep into the oldest API call, which was cached. You can see here that the client called Amazon API Gateway and that triggered a Lambda authorizer with called ABP. Once an authorized decision was returned, it called the app backend APIs to get a response. Now let's see what happens for a different uh, trace, one which was cached. So what I see here is the client called Amazon API Gateway, which directly triggered the backend APIs. What's worth noticing is that the Lambda authorizer or verified permissions were not called in this request path. This saved both latency and cost. Now let's go through the second use case where the same user calls a different API. So I head back to Postman and what I do is I use the same JWT token for Alice, but I am going to try to call different APIs. Instead of calling pet1, I'm going to try to get pet20. So I hit send to get pet20. Alice is allowed to do this. And then I try to get pet21. I hit send again. Great. Alice is allowed to do both of these things. Now let's change it up a bit. Instead of calling a get API, let's see what happens when I change the HTTP method and I call a post API. So I'm going to do post on pets. 
Well, the message says that Alice is not allowed to access this resource because she's part of a reader's group. She's only allowed to call get APIs. So let's see what's happening behind the scenes and X head over to X-Ray. So here I am in X-Ray and I'm trying to get all the traces related to pet 20 and 21. So pet 21st, I see one trace. And within the trace, I see that the Lambda authorizer and verified permissions were invoked in the request path. Now let's check what happened when I called the API to call pet 21. To do that, I load up the trace for pet 21. What I find is that the Lambda authorizer and verified permissions was also invoked in this flow and a cache decision was not used. So what happens when we call the post API and we try to list pets? We got an error because it was unauthorized, but let's deep dive into this trace. What we see here is Amazon API Gateway triggered a land authorizer that called verified permissions. Because the result was a deny, the backend APIs were not invoked and the request was sent back to the client. This covers our second use case where the same user calls different APIs. Now let's head over to our third use case where different users are calling the same API. As before, I head over to Postman and what I'm going to do is make API requests for Alice and Abhi. So first let's try Alice and I try to get pet 100. I see that the request is successful because Alice is a reader of pets. Now I'm going to switch tabs and use the JWT token for Abhi as I've shown here. I'm going to call the same API and try to get pet 100. So as Abhi is an admin, he was also able to get pet 100. Let's head over to X-Ray to understand whether the Lambda authorizer and verified permissions were invoked or a cache decision was used. To do that, I try to get all traces for slash pets slash 100 and I see there are two. I open up the first trace for Alice. I find that Amazon API Gateway triggered the Lambda authorizer and verified permissions. I go back to check for the other trace for Abhi. Here I find that Amazon API Gateway triggered the Lambda authorizer and verified permissions again. So this means a cache decision was not used and a new decision was generated. This concludes use case three, where different users are calling the same API, but a cache decision is not being used. All of this is great, but I'm sure a lot of you have a question on what changes did I need to make to enable authorization decision caching in API Gateway? And that's the most beautiful part. If you use the quick start wizard to protect your APIs, the wizard automatically sets up authorization decision caching for you. Let's try to understand what the wizard sets up behind the scenes to enable authorization decision caching in API Gateway. To do that, I'm going to open the API Gateway console and select my API. I'm then going to navigate to authorizers, select the AVP authorizer and try to edit it. What I'm most interested on the screen are the bottom three sections. What you'll find is I have the authorization cache radio button enabled. The wizard sets a 120 second TTL by default. This means that by default, authorization decisions are cached for 120 seconds. Lastly, I configure the cache keys. In API Gateway, we can configure the cache keys by using identity source types.
I have three cache keys configured. The authorization header, the HTTP method, which could either be a get, a put, or a post, and the HTTP path, which means the URI. For example, slash pet slash one, if I'm trying to get pet one, or slash pets slash 30. Remember, all of these configurations are done automatically by the quick start wizard, which enables authorization decision caching for you. At the beginning of the video, I had promised that I will show you how this saves latency and cost. I ran an experiment where I set it up such that 60% of my API calls were cached, which means six out of 10 authorization decisions were returned from the cache and the Lambda authorizer and verified permissions were not involved. What I found based on the experiment was a 40% reduction in average latency. I have plotted average latency of requests on the left with the blue line representing requests that were not cached and the pink line representing the latency of requests that were cached. In order to understand the cost better, I ran a few numbers. So assuming we make half a million API calls, if no caching was enabled, each of these requests would have been authorized, resulting in 500,000 requests to Amazon verified permissions. This would have costed you $75. With caching enabled and assuming a 60% cache hit ratio, we notice that only 200,000 requests are made to verified permissions. The rest are based on cache decisions. Now for these 200,000 requests, you will pay $30 all in all, we find that there's a 60% reduction in cost when caching for authorization decision. When using authorization decision caching, there are a few best practices to keep in mind. There are certain conditions under which authorization decision caching works well. I've listed a few of them here. The first one is that users should call the same API multiple times. It, this ensures that you get high cache hit rates. Secondly, your policies should not be dependent on time. Third, you should realize that any updates you make to the policies will have a delayed impact on the data plane and on the authorization decisions that impact your API calls. So in some scenarios, this is not useful. For example, if you are debugging policies, you want the results to immediately show up rather than waiting for the cache to refresh. Lastly, if your decisions are based on query parameters or the request body, this approach would not work for you as they are not part of the cache keys. Another common question I get from customers is, how do I tune my cache? What is the ideal TTL for my cache? Well, that depends a lot on your application and on your business use case. For example, if your policies are static, then you may cache your authorization decisions for the entire session or token expiry time. So a lot of you will have in your mind, how do I get started with Amazon verified permissions? For that, I've put up a set of QR codes that help you get started with the service. So go ahead, uh, log into the AWS console and head to verified permissions. I wanted to thank you for spending the time with me to learn more about authorization and protecting Amazon API Gateway APIs with verified permissions.